Yeah, welcome to F1 Installations. Uh, we've been having a lot of um, tutorials um, as far as the course introductory analysis is concerned. And um, we talked about real number systems. Uh, we looked at proofs and uh, proof by contradiction, contraposition, and uh, all that. Uh, I hope you've been watching those uh, videos. Okay, they are very important. And, uh, now, today we want to look at another definition of limit. Okay. And in our previous uh, videos, we define limits as um, so if we say limits of a function um, as x approaches a certain number plus this. And we're saying that this has an equivalent statement that given epsilon greater than zero, uh, then there is delta is a function of epsilon and is greater than zero, uh, such that uh, when zero is less than the absolute of x minus e, and this is also less than delta, then we're going to have the absolute of the function minus its limit less than epsilon. So this is what we've been doing. Uh, but today we want to look at the um, definition of limits by um, another person that we call Gini. So, definition um, of yeah, so for all S n, we will be saying that um, as S gets closer to E, so S is approaching E, rather that it's not actually E. Alright, so then it means that the implication of all this is that um, F of X n realize that see, here we are having f of s now we are saying that for all x n so the domain here has been changed to uh, s n so we are saying that all this is also approaching what l so this is the definition uh, of limits according to Haney. Okay, so this definition is particularly useful when you are looking at one sided limits so, limits to the left, limit to the right, and we realize that limit to the left equals the limit to the right, and we say that the limit of the function exists. Right. So you are we're going to look at that. All right. So but one sided limit. So let's see how Henning defines us. So one sided uh, limits uh, by Henning. So if we pick f of s, the limits of f of s as s approaches um, e, then if you are looking at it to the right, then we we'll put um, positive here, means that it's not a raised to the power plus, but it means that we are approaching uh, the a from what the right. And uh, if this is equal to l, then according to Henning, we try to say that for all x n, okay, then we say that S uh, is approaching E. Then to the right, we say that X is greater than E. So S is approaching E. S is uh, greater than E. Okay. Then it means that F of uh, Xn uh, also is approaching what L. So that is for the right hand side. Then moving to the left side, then f of x, x s approaches e to the left. If this is actually equal to l, then according to Henning's definition of limits, he's saying that for all x n, so you realize that in all cases, it's just that we change the domain here to instead of real numbers, we are looking at uh, sequence, so we're changing it to, to sequence. So. So if it is converging to L, then the limit to the left, uh, we are in X, is actually approaching A, then X here will be less than A. Then we are approaching A from the left, so X should be what less than A. Then it, it means that um, F of less is also approaching uh, that right A. Okay, so, um, but before we take uh, examples on this, there are certain basic definitions that I want to look at. So let's look at some basic definitions. Uh, uh, basic definitions. Uh, uh, defini 
definitions. Okay. If I will pick an, an example. The first one is um, the absolute absolute value. And the absolute value. So for instance, if we have the absolute of x, then what's absolute of about absolute of x? Okay, then this will have uh, three a definition. So if it's absolute of x, then it's likely that we get negative of x. We'll, we'll get um, zero. Then we can get um, s. Provided certain conditions are satisfied. So here if it is observed that x is um, less than zero, so s is less than zero, then we have negative. When um, s is equal to zero, then this will be equal to zero. And the last one, if x is greater than zero, so we have the absolute value. Um, so that is the first one. Next, the next one we want to look at is um, the signal function. So the signal, the signal function. So there's a function, signal function. And uh, it is written as sig. So we have the function here. There's the signal function right there. So for this particular one, it's possible that we'll get one. And I'll get zero and we'll get a negative one. So this is equal to one if it is observed that uh, the function as we have it there is producing positive results. Okay, so if the function as we have it here gives us exactly zero, then we say that the same function here equals what zero. And um, if this gives us um, is less than zero, then we are having negative at one. The, the last one is the greatest integer function. So we have the greatest, so the, the greatest integer function. And uh, we, we write in terms of like this, greatest integer function. So this. Right, so by definition, it is we um, are looking at the, the greatest integer. So if you have this x here, then it means that we are looking at the greatest integer, which is uh, less than or equal to x. So it means that the greatest integer. Which is less than or equal to x. So here's yeah, just a quick example. If if I have, for instance, uh, 1.2 here, and we are talking about the greatest integer value for this, so the result is going to be what um, one because so the greatest integer which is less than or equal to this. So one is the result and we are going to this piece was one. So having um, all this definition at our finger tips we can now look at um, a real example and see how we apply the definition of a limit by him to solve uh, problems on this. So let's take our example. First example <coughs> So example one. So we are evaluating. So evaluate. Okay, so we are evaluating the limit of so average of this divided by x minus two as x approaches negative 2. So we are finding the limit of this. We are evaluating this. So we And we are doing that using the limit definition according to him. So we are saying that um, then for us to find all this, we need to check whether the limit to the right, that's why we use the one-sided limit, 
limit to the right um, equals the limit to the left when that is done. When they are equal, then we'll conclude that okay, the limit of this equals that specific value. So let's let's start and see, looking at it from the right. So limit of the average of this um, x minus two as s approaches negative two. So we are looking at it from the right. So from the right, then according to Heine, we state that uh, for all x n. Okay, so for all x n and uh, so we are approaching this so uh, x and getting closer to negative two. And uh, we say that um, and it's getting we are approaching negative two from the right. So x n is uh, greater than negative two. It implies that. So all this is that any place we see x here, we're going to replace everything with x n. It implies that we're going to have xn minus 2, okay, then xn minus 2. Now, then we are approaching from the right. So, if, if you quickly refer to what you have here, the absolute value, say that x will either be equal to negative s, 0, or one, uh, hot s. So, in this case, you saying that it's greater than what we have here. So, because it's approaching from the right, it's saying that whatever is in this absolute symbol will give us a positive. So this will be equal to xn minus 2 divided by xn minus 2. And so we can, this nullifies that on getting it 1. So the idea here is that we are approaching negative 2 from the right. So whatever is in the absolute symbol here. Turns out to be positive. So we have this. That means limit to the right is giving us positive one. Now let's see what limit to the left gives us. So limit of x minus two as an absolute symbol x minus two as s approaches negative two from the left. So just as we have it here, we say that according to any, then for all xn, xn is approaching negative 2. Now we want to approach negative 2 from the left. So xn is going to be less than negative 2. So the implication is that we're going to have less minus that. And uh, we're having this minus this. Now because we are approaching from the left, we realize that whatever is in the absolute symbol here will come out with negative attached to it. So let's buy some space here. Alright, so everything there becomes um, negative of x n minus 2. And x n minus 2. So this cancels that and uh, the resulting value is negative 1. We realize that the, the limit to the right gave us um, positive 1. The limit to the left is giving us negative 1, which Realize that they are not the same. So it is difficult for us to find the limit of this as s approaches negative 2. It is difficult for us to answer this question. So we say that uh, since um, so the limit, so the left, uh, uh, the left hand limit, okay, so um, is not equal to the right hand limit. So the left side is not equal to the right hand side. So you say that uh, since that is the case, uh, the limits uh, of, so we want to write it in similar. So say so that the limits of the absolute of this as S approaches negative 2 does not exist. So it does not exist. So we can just simply write it does not exist. So, all right. So that that is the case as far as one-sided limits are concerned, and the definition of uh, limit by any.
this. And so you look at it, you realize that it's, it's quite simple. Okay. All right. So um, I hope you found this um, very useful and helpful to you. Thanks very much for um, watching this particular tutorial. Um, subscribe to the channel, the Fuma Solutions, and uh, share your views and uh, send us questions. We are ready to help you. Yeah, until we meet again, keep calculating uh, problems as far as introductory analysis is concerned. Thank you very much.